Hello, uh, this is Matt with Abnormal Mapping. You can find me at abnormalmapping.com. And I'm going to play The Blackwell Legacy, which is the first of the Blackwell series of adventure games by Dave Gilbert. Uh, the fifth and final game, Blackwell Epiphany, is coming out shortly at the time I'm recording this. And I wanted to play through all of them again in preparation. And I figured I'd record them. This is my first time recording a game with uh, OBS. I've done a little bit of streaming, but no recording. Uh, hopefully things sound alright. I'm recovering from the flu, so I know I sound a little rough around the edges. But uh, I wanted to do this today, so let's uh, start a new game. Yes, sure. So, I guess this is it. Years of watching and waiting and hoping, and it comes down to this. Do I love you? Do I miss you? I don't know for sure, I hardly know you. But you're the closest thing to family I've got, and I suppose that's something. Goodbye, Auntie. Wherever you are. This is my first time playing the special edition re-release of this game. It has a new voice recording and art in it. Uh, when I played this originally, when it was much newer, uh, but should be all right. I, I've mostly forgotten all the puzzles, so I will be exploring things as I go. Hopefully, it will still be entertaining to watch me fumble through. Let me turn on my mic a little bit. What a morning. At least I'm home now. Okay, it's an adventure game. Hi there. Um, hi? So who are you visiting today? This is, uh, my place. But, uh, this guy doesn't recognize me. Huh? Seriously, who are you here to see? Can't let you in unless you tell me. Um, I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. Um, let's see. Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you before? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. Who the hell are you? Jim Birdo. All right. Jim. Where's the regular doorman? Geez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. I stepped in to help because I know everybody. How come nobody told me? Notices were posted all over the building. I put them up myself. If you lived here, you'd have seen him. Who pays attention to things like that? Well, that's not my problem. I feel like if he knew everybody, he wouldn't be scabbing for them, because that's a shitty thing to do. Please, I've had a really tough morning. I need to get home. Sorry, lady. Rules are rules. Listen, I really live here. Fourth floor, number 4E. 4E. Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? No! I live there! And I want to go there, thank you very much. Oh, hmm. Maybe you're telling the truth. He sees reason, thank God. Do you have any ID? A driver's license or something? Yes. I have a driver's license, it's upstairs. In my desk drawer. Crap. <laughs> Come on, this is New York, who actually drives? True, but I still can't let you in unless you prove you live here. I don't have any inventory. I'm not gonna threaten him. That seems like a shitty thing to do. I'm gonna leave. This is my. Okay, I have no ID, and you don't know me. 
What can I do to prove that I live here? Hmm. Well, can anyone in the building vouch for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know anybody here. How long have you lived here again? Be quiet. Not all of us are social butterflies. Okay, whatever. Hey, what about Nishanti Sharma? He could vouch for you. Who is this Nis... Uh, Nish... Nishanti. Nishanti Sharma. He lives in 4F. You know, right next door to 4E. You really don't get out much, do you? Your point? Nothing, but I'm sure she could vouch for you. Great, call her up. She's not here. Of course she isn't. So I gotta wait here all day for her. I might have to. Although, she usually goes to Washington Square Park in the morning. You can look for her there. Well, let's go back. find Nishanti See you around. since she can vouch for me. Well, I've got an inventory. Top of the screen. Okay. Let's look at this letter. Dr. Donald Quentin, Bellevue Medical Hospital, New York, New York. Ms. Blackwell, my name is Dr. Donald Quentin, and it was your aunt's primary care physician here at Bellevue Hospital. I've seen to your aunt's needs since she arrived here 25 years ago. Please accept my heartfelt condolences for your loss. Feel free to visit my office at any time. I'm sure there's much to discuss. Sincerely, Donald Quentin, MD. This must have been... Well, at the beginning, she was saying her goodbye on the uh, bridge. That was her aunt. Let's go. Oh, this is a nice map. Um, Washington Square Park. I don't really want... Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Talk. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty. I wonder why. I don't want to talk too much about what I know about this series since a lot of it's going to be explained in the course of the uh, game. Please note, Dog Walking Park is closed until further notice. Hmm. I'm sure that won't be relevant later. Uh, this game looks really nice mm. now. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. I'd originally played Dave Gilbert's first game, The Shiva. Uh, oh, look at the dog. Well, now he's wrapped around the pool. Oh, for heaven's sake. Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. There. All better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you. The lady next door. Yeah. Hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No. Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. That's a cute dog you've got. Isn't he just? Normally he behaves, but he seems to have taken a shine to you. Oh, great. Anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um... Yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, that's the problem, see. He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just need to get home. All right. Let's keep walking. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rosangela. She lives here. She does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. Um... Oh, it was no problem at all. Do you want anything else? Milk or orange juice, perhaps? Um... Never mind. 
Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors, after all. Yeah, I guess. <coughs> Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Really? Yes, really. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Oh, I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes, um... Their names are me, myself, and I. Um, it's a joke. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Very funny. I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rosangela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa, if you like. Rosangela's kind of a mouthful, you know. All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. What a strange lady. All right, as I was saying, um... I can't remember who lives there. This, I played Dave Gilbert's earlier game, The Shiva, which is also great, and then moved on to this one. This is my uh, was would have been my second experience with an adventure game studio game. Home, thank God. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Ugh. Hello. This is Dr. Quentin from Bellevue Hospital. Yes. I was your aunt's primary care physician. Did you receive my letter? Yes, I received it. I haven't had the time to come by, though. That's all right. I'm sure you're busy. However, should you find the time today, my entire schedule is free. I... sure. I I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Good day. If I don't visit him, he's just going to keep bothering me. I suppose I should just get it over with. All right, but we've got uh, finally some time to explore. Let's see what we're Just a trash can like. filled with crumpled up novel ideas. Writing down her ideas. It's 2006. My so. computer. It's a bit old, but it lets me access the internet and do my writing. And then print out all your novel ideas. Just some old book review clippings. So she writes for a paper. This is the only living plant I own. I bought it two years ago. It's still living, despite my total lack of care. I assume this is not a real. Yep. It's fake, but kind of pretty. That leads to my bedroom. It's an oversized closet, but it suits me fine. That's Griff, the P.I. Bear. I've had him as long as I can remember. He's in horrible shape, but I don't have the heart to throw him away. I like the implication that she is uh, talking to herself about all of her stuff. It's my notebook. This TV was here when I moved in. I must have watched all these a dozen times. Out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. Just a standard stove oven combo. Okay. How about this picture? It's a photograph of Auntie Lauren and me. So that's her aunt that died? Auntie Lauren. She took care of me after my parents died. For most of my life, Auntie Lauren was a vegetable, slowly rotting away in a hospital bed. I don't remember what she was like before that. This picture is all I have to go by. It's me. I look scared out of my mind. I don't remember when this picture was taken, but I look about four or five years old. This is the bridge that we were on at the beginning? It looks like it. That's everything in the house, I think. So maybe let's go see the doctor.
I don't think so. Just a small transistor radio. So I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay. Looks legit. Go right in. His name's on the door. You can't miss it. Thanks. Come in. Dr. Quentin? Yes? I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in. Come in. Dr. Quentin looks like James Cameron to me. You got my letter, I trust? Yes, I did. Good, good. My condolences on the loss of your mother. Thanks, but she was my aunt, not my mother. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, yes I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? I'm fine. That's good to hear. You received the ashes? Yes, I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel. It's not like I knew her. Or even remember her from... before. She's like a stranger. So why did you make it a point of visiting her all those years? Hmm... There's a lot of mean... or at least curt responses in here. Habit, I guess. It was a place to go every week. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead. Life goes on. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Keep writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them because they were more interested in you. It's kind of creepy. Okay, I am this close to leaving. Why am I here? Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we say, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case, and now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. Does Rosangela have a condition? Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes. Patricia, I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it. There was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with the family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come in to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family history more carefully. I do apologize. I just assumed... Well, never mind. It doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No. I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. I feel like if she visited every week, she should have spoken to this doctor and they should have had this conversation years ago. But I'm no medical expert. You never could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me. I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I. But fascinating? It might come as a surprise to you, but yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. She'd sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well... As you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right. She had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? 
Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that, we had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to Auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. If Auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time, but I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did Auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? It's difficult to say, but it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open, she thrashed, her screams. Well, we had to gag her eventually. My God. I know. Did she still feel it? When she was sedated? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. Well, that's pretty bleak. So, I had a grandmother. Apparently so. How do you know about her? It was in your aunt's case history when she was Most people have grandmother's doctor. Patricia Blackwell's symptoms were the same, word for word. Patricia's case was severe, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. Hmm. So what should I do? Right now? Nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware, is all. And come talk to me if, well, there's any concern. You couldn't find any other link between the two cases? None, aside from the family connection. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too would cry out that name on occasion. Joey? Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. Well, I guess that's it. Not Is helpful. there anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, you're the beneficiary. It's just a folder, some documents and so on. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh, well, thanks for that. It's no problem at all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now, so feel free to drop in any time. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure. Creepy doctor. Oh, look at these. Let's go look at his cars. He's got cars on the thing. Guess it's time to go. Looks like it's from Bellevue. Let's take a gander at this pictures. I think they're pictures. Dear Lauren, so you've been at NYU for two weeks now and have not called. I'm sure things are busy in the Big Apple, but don't forget the family you left behind. Things back home are well. Jack starts high school on Monday, so he's a bit nervous. You know how he gets. Be sure to write him a letter. He misses his big sister. I admit, I am still a bit nervous about you living in New York all by yourself. Are you carrying ID with you when you go out like I asked? You know me, just being a mom. Somebody has to. Keep your head on straight, kid, as your dad would say. And remember that you have family back home that misses you. Love you, mom and dad and Jack. I assume this is... Lauren's mother? So you're... This would be your grandmother? 
Hello, sis. I'm writing this on my new St. Clair Model 15. Mom says that improving my handwriting is a lost cause, so she got me this. Keen, huh? I've already typed a few stories on it and this letter. Can't type for long because Dad says the noise drives him up the friggin' wall. What does he know? Saw his life in the big bad city. Troy is dead boring as usual. Why'd you have to go to college, huh? There's nobody to talk to in this dump anymore. See you at Thanksgiving. Jacko. Dear Lauren, well, Thanksgiving time has come and gone, and so have you. In just two short months, I can already see you evolving into a capable young woman. You've outgrown the small town, Lauren, which m that much is obvious. Jack will be following in your footsteps soon, I am sure. Visiting you in New York is all he talks about. People just not use contractions in the 60s? Speaking of Jack, I know you are worried about him. We all are, but don't feel that this is your responsibility. You're his sister and you love him. He's got to learn to live up without you eventually. You're growing up. Let him grow up too. Till Christmas, till Christmas, love, Mom, and Dad, and Jack. Lauren, can you keep a secret? I don't want you to say this over the phone in case Mom or Dad might overhear. Mom's been acting odd lately. Started a few days after you went back to New York. She was dragging me shopping when suddenly she screamed and fainted. She was pointing at the corner of the room, but there was nothing there. We brought her to the hospital, and she says she's fine now, but it's, she's been very on edge and paranoid. It's hard to explain. Dad's no hope. Can you call and try to cheer her up? She won't listen to me. Just tell her about. Just don't tell her about this letter. I just hope she's okay. Jacko. Lauren, you seem concerned after our last phone call. I just wanted to write and reassure you that everything is fine. Let us know when you're coming home again for Thanksgiving. With love, Mom and Dad and Jack. Dear sis, mom's getting worse. You said it best during Thanksgiving. It's like something is watching over her shoulder. Paranoia. She sits by herself for hours, pretending to read when it's obvious she isn't. Well, at least she's been covering her ears as if to keep out a sound and closing her eyes tight. Dad's losing patience with her. He's convinced she's lost her mind and I'm starting to agree. She refuses to get any kind of help. Why can't she see there's a problem? This isn't normal. Not normal at all. Why can't she see that? I hate to admit it, but I'm kind of scared. Scared for her. I don't know what to do. Jack. Lauren, it has a name. Mom locked herself in the bathroom this morning. She sounded like she was talking to herself in there. Well, not to herself. It was like there was somebody else there. But there wasn't. I listened. I couldn't understand it. But she did say the name Joey. I asked her later who Joey was and she got really scared. Then she got angry and said, If you know what's good for you, never mention that name again. This could be the key. If we find out who Joey is, maybe we can save her. Jack. Dear Lauren, how much time has passed between these? A month. Dear Lauren, well it's done. The final papers have been signed. It hurt. A lot. But it had to be done. Mom has now been committed to a mental ward. I have to say I'm relieved. I know how you feel about it. But you weren't there. You didn't come home to see her screaming and tearing her hair out running around the house, knocking down everything in her way. Cuts were all over her face and the house was practically destroyed. I was so shocked I just closed the door and waited outside for Dad to come home. It was awful. She clawed at him, clawed at his face, and drew blood. It will haunt my dreams for the rest of my life. Thanks for coming out, Lauren. I don't think Dad and I could have handled it on our own. She kind of drained us, you know? Can I come to New York and visit? I need to get away for a while. Jack. Congratulations, summa cum laude. I knew you were a smarty pants, sis. Now you've got the documentation to prove it. Thanks again for letting me stay at your place for the weekend. It was just like old times, except you weren't smoking then. New York is an amazing city. Columbus is a great camp. Columbia has a great campus. Can't wait to move down here in September. Till then, I've got to deal with our grumpy old man. He's insufferable as always. Ever since mom, he's been hard to talk to, and very hard on me. I should tell him you're smoking now. Maybe he'll concentrate on you for once. See you again soon, Jack. <clears throat> it's happened, Lauren. Just like you eventually said it would. I'm in love. Her name is Maria. She's from Italy and we met in statistics class. She asked if she could copy my notes because her hand was tired. We ended up having lunch and we've been inseparable ever since. She's incredible. She's got the most amazing red hair and I want you to meet her. I'll come by soon, Jack. I assume Jack then is my father and this Maria is my mother. Red hair, you know. Lauren, are you alright? Ever since Mom's funeral, you've been hard to reach. I know it's been hard on us, but it's been six months. I tried calling, but she never answered. I came by the other day 
But you didn't open the door. I knew you were there, Lauren. I could hear you. I risked using the spare key you gave me, but you changed the lock. Come for dinner on Christmas Eve. Maria is a great cook. We won't ask any questions. Just come. Mom might be gone, but we're still here. I miss my big sister. Lauren? Who's Joey? I went over last week to give you a Christmas gift. You didn't answer the door, but I heard you talking to somebody named Joey. Is it a boyfriend? Are you seeing a man named Joey? Is that why you've dropped off the map? Or is it something else? I don't think I need you to talk. I don't think I need to tell you that what? Oh. For God's sake, talk to me. Lauren, I know you're annoyed, but I am not sorry. I didn't want to do it, but you left me no choice. Hiring a private detective to follow you was the only option left. He told me some odd things. You won't talk to me, but you'll talk to total strangers. You'll go to every far corner of the city at the strangest hours, and you talk to yourself when you think you're alone. Don't deny it. He heard it, and so did I. Not that any of it made any sense. That alone is disturbing enough. But then he saw you collapse. You were all alone in some obscure park in the Bronx when you just fainted. He was about to call an ambulance, but then he saw you get up again and walk off like nothing happened. You were always there for me growing up. Don't shut me out, sis. Just let me be there for you now. Jacko, please stay away. Don't worry about me. There are things that need to be done, and I'm the only one who can do them. Don't ask me to explain. All I can say is that I understand our mother more than ever. She was never crazy, Jacko. Trust me on this and take some comfort in it. You've grown up and you've grown tough and you don't need anyone to fight your battles anymore. You don't need me, but I'll always be your big sister, Lauren. I'm returning your letter because I refuse to accept it. No, you don't need to fight my battles. I'm not 14 years old anymore, but we're still a family and that's important, especially now that Dad has died. Look, you obviously have something going on, and that's fine. I don't have to be involved if you don't want me to, but I still want to be involved in my I still want you involved in my life. Marie and I are getting married in November. You were coming. No stupid excuses. Jack. Greetings from Greece. If there are any words to describe the beauty of this place, it still wouldn't do it justice. A perfect spot for the honeymoon. Things have been busy, but you, as you can imagine, but I want to quickly write you and say I'm glad you made the wedding. Of course, I'm still worried about you, but someone has to be. You take care and stay in touch. Maria says hi. Jack. There are some pictures stuck to the back of this letter. Oh, hey. Dear Aunt Lauren. Yes, Aunt Lauren. You're an aunt. I'm a dad. Maria gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. We named her Rosangela after Maria's grandmother. She's so quiet. She hardly cries at all. I'm all set to spoil her rotten, but Maria says to take it easy. She looks just like her mother, and there's a bit of you in her eyes, too and mom and dad. Everything her family was or will be, this child has it. Life is changing so fast. I just want to hold on to this tiny creature and never let go. The future is an exciting place and I have everything I could ever want. I don't want anything to change. Ever. Jack. Next page. Jack died. Offices of Durkin and Goldberg. Dear Mrs. Blackwell, it is indeed within your legal rights to take custody of your five-year-old niece. With the death of her parents, you are her only living relative. Please contact the office and we will start the necessary paperwork. Huh. That's, uh, grim. Got some pictures and we got some stuff, but this is at 33. Let's save. Okay, if all goes well, this will be the end of the first recording, and I'll put this up on YouTube. Let's see if YouTube will accept a recording this long. And then we'll try again. If not, this will be broken into two parts. Uh, thanks for watching, anyone who did watch. And uh, I'll be back with more soon, and we'll answer this damn phone.